Have you not said that? Skip forward. And it's harvest. What do they plant in the Middle East? Wheat, barley, right? Something like that. Right? Who, who are farmers in the Philippines? Any farmer here? Okay. What is the hardest, hardest, hardest portion in farming? I know it's not which is the hardest part in, in, in farming? Which portion is the hardest part? Plowing. Plowing means to say preparing the, preparing the ground. That's very hard because you have to remove everything, make it thing. And then you plant, which is also difficult, especially if you're planting rice. You're doing that every, oh, I mean, the whole day. I don't know how can they make straight again in, uh, after they plant. I, I don't know, people do that. My parents are not a farmer. That's the hardest part. The second hardest part is harvesting. That's the hard part because you have to carry all the grain and so heavy. In between that, a little bit, you know, relax. That's what Jesus was saying. You are saying there's still four months and I am just relaxing, doing nothing. But actually, Jesus was trying to tell his disciples, you are saying, there's still four months, there's time for me to relax. The devil does not relax. So that was what Jesus was saying. You say, it's still four months, I can still relax. There's no time to relax. For a Christian believer, there's no time to relax. You are always on fire. Right? Because if the fire is gone, what's going to happen? Uh, extinguish the fire. It's very difficult to start the fire again. So don't let it disappear. That was what Jesus was saying to his disciples. You said it's still four months, I can relax. No, no time for us to relax. A lot of people going to hell every day. You know, there's no time to relax. And the woman went to his countrymen and share the good news to them that I have found the Messiah. I mean, come, come, come and see. Actually, what verse 39 said, because of the woman's testimony, we believe. But now we believe because we heard you. Interesting thing, the word woman's testimony in Greek is martureo. Does it sound something? Martureo? Where we derive the word martyr. She is a martyr. You don't need to die to be a martyr. All you need to do is to witness. But of course, they are in the Christian church. When they witness, they, they are killed. Right? You don't need to die. You just need to witness. You just need to declare Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And every day a lot of people go into hell because some Christians don't do anything. Just sitting, and I'm safe anything. Well, I care about other people. I wonder if you are really Christian. Because if nobody shares the word with you, you are not safe also. Don't you feel like if not for that person who shared the gospel to me, I'll be going straight to hell. And you are, oh, I'm safe, and I'm fine, I will relax. You know, a lot of people are suffering, going to hell, family members going to hell. Right. Do we have a heart for that? If you don't have heart for that, I don't know if you are even a believer. I mean, you see, a lot of people are suffering. No heart for that. Maybe your heart is not yet changed. It's still rocked, solid. It's not yet the heart of flesh mentioned in the scripture. I will change your heart into a flesh, not a stone. And if you don't have heart for the loss, your heart is still a stone. You have not yet been regenerated. Sad to say. Some people think that they will go to heaven and when they reach heaven, or when they reach there, I, I remember a story. Two neighbors. Doesn't get along very well. 
one pastor and the other neighbor. And then when the pastor died, he died, of course, he's a believer in heaven. And then the neighbor also died. Also went to heaven. And then the pastor said, Oh, I didn't expect you to be here. And the guy said, Me either. I don't expect you to be here. But the thing is, we are saved by the grace of God. We're not perfect. But we are being, you know, transformed day by day. Right? But that transformation will not happen until you have Christ Jesus. I tell you, no transformation will happen with a definite change without Christ. Maybe you can change yourself. But then when you reach heaven, you say, I have changed myself. And God will get a magnifying lens and see, okay, it's still not acceptable. Because as said in Romans, everyone falls short of the glory of God. Nobody can reach heaven by their own way. The only way to God is Jesus. Only Jesus. We must have concern for the lost because if nobody shared the gospel to us, we are also lost. And one time I was just praying for my children because I know they are millennials. What does it mean when they are millennials? A different generation, not the same generation. I pray for them. And sometimes I wonder. I just pray for my kids, for my wife, for my family. But then again, you cannot force them, right? You can only declare. Our responsibility is to make this, not to force people to accept the word. Because it's their choice, not your choice. You, can, you cannot show this on their mouth. You can only declare with love that, you know, I love you, that's why I'm sharing this to you. But still, your decision will be your decision whether you accept or not. I'm just telling you, because I already have the Lord. I know where I'm going, because I have entrusted my life to God. You, on the other hand, will have to make your own choice. Right? Our loved ones, our family, our children, mother, father, brother, sister, they will make their own choice. Our responsibility is to tell them, right? So when we go there, God will ask us, did you share it to your family, your loved ones? You should just say, yes, I did. Right? And pray for them. And sometimes when you say, you know, I was just praying, and then I realized what Jesus said, you know, prayer of a righteous man, I did it so much. Not because we are very good, but righteousness was included to us. But they also mentioned that the sin is, you know, it's like a curtain that, you know, when you pray, it's like hitting the ceiling and going back. And I was just praying that, is my prayer reaching there? Maybe there is something in there. And something struck in my heart. You know what struck in my heart? What are you willing to give up? So that is enough. Because sometimes we are still living in sin. Search your heart. I will search my heart. Sometimes, you know, you justify things. That's the thing that blocks it. It's not God is dead or cannot hear or sleeping or something. It's our own sin. That's our prayer is not being effective. That's what I heard. What are you willing to sacrifice for your loved ones? To make your prayer effective? Are you willing to discard that? Whatever is that? Inappropriate watching on YouTube or whatever, internet. Gambling, smoking, whatever. I, I really don't know. What are you willing to give up? for your loved ones. Because your prayer, it doesn't reach God, it's just, you know, because of sin, blocking, it's because you're still living a sinful life. You are a believer already. You have not surrendered it to God. You cannot get rid of it. Only God 
can get rid of it. All you need to do is and move your knees down then. Right? They said, if you want to go to heaven, you have to go down. Kneel. They said, oh, it's going to be a few shorter. No, that's the way to heaven. No, if you want your prayer to be heard, kneel down. Not standing up. I mean, say you humble yourself, you want to reach what it meant. As I was saying here, Jesus was saying, yet the time will come and the time has come when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit. And in truth, in truth means based on the word of God. It's just the word of God. Based on His word. And the worshiper is the inner man, the inner woman. is the one worshiping God, not the flesh. So if you have not really truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not really given your life to God, this is the time. Because there may never be a second time. Right? I want to ask people to raise their hands, stand up or whatever. But if your heart says, you know, I have not. If the Lord has touched your heart today, I will pray a simple prayer. You don't need to stand up or raise your hand. Because some people are not comfortable with that. But if your heart is right, no matter what, you're standing there or sitting there, it doesn't matter. If your heart is right. If your heart is willing. If you think that, you know, I am giving up because I could not change my life because I am in a mess, then this is the time to surrender control to God. Let us pray. Father God, I heard your word. I know, oh Lord God, that it is only you who justifies. And it's only through you that we can be saved. I heard your message. It's only through your son that we are saved. Father God, I surrender my life to you. Take control of my life. Make me the person you want me to be. I pray, O Lord God, that you may continue to guide me and strengthen me and lead me to the way of our last time. Let us pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray again, Lord. Father God, we thank you for this time that we have. Pray, O Lord God, that you continue to remind us of the truth of your word. We have value in your sight, O God. That's why you send your only beloved son to die in our behalf, so that we might be saved. You don't need us. We needed you. Through transformation is done through the Holy Spirit. We don't change ourselves. We need your help. We pray, O Lord God, that you continue to mold us, guide us, strengthen us, give us the wisdom to discern what is right and what is wrong. And we pray, O Lord God, that we may walk a life that is pleasing to yourself. And then we may continue to love one another and minister to one another. In your name, be continually be exalted in our midst, and may the praise and glory and honor goes to you alone.